Hi everybody, this is Stephanie. This is my reading album I'm going to be sharing with you guys. And right before I get into that, I'm going to be sharing some of the products that I'll be using throughout the year. So I'm going to grab out my first uh, page protector. This is going to be the cover. I want to place some Project Life cards in there that have some quotes and inspirational to motivate me every time I open this album to continue to keep reading throughout the year since I do know it's easy to get distracted and derail. I'm also going to be placing on one of those Project Life cards um, my goals for the year so that way I can remain focused. So I'm going to be sharing all the printables that I'm going to be using throughout the year with uh, this project. But I also wanted to mention how I'm printing right now since I did notice a change uh, and improvement and I want to share it with you guys so that way uh, in case you all want to print and join along with me on this project you're able to um, or just in general if you ever consider printing some of your work it's instant gratification you as soon as you buy it you're able to print it and i love that so so much since with right now with uh, shipping and everything else there's a ton of delays so i'm going to bring this to your attention that normally i print with regular cardstock this is nina bright white cardstock and I have been noticing that there is a slight fade to it and normally on a regular basis as you can see here it's totally fine until you get up and close to the images especially the ones that have color on them you get to see that they are kind of grainy meaning the color didn't fully saturate the entire um, um, project life car completely it has a faded look and then you can notice that on smaller images as well so when you start printing out um, the stickers, the printable stickers, and you know, for a planner or just in general from a collection, you do notice the fade more on those little individual items. So, now this one right here is the second one. This is how I print it with cardstock, but I used a different printer setting. So, I use the presentation paper setting. As you can see, the color is more true to itself. But I'm still using regular cardstock, so it did still seep in, but it looks more crisp than the uh, original. The third one right here is actual printer paper, presentation paper, I'm sorry, premium presentation paper with that correct setting of presentation paper. And you can see it is by far the best. The color is the truest. Even the image that says currently reading is awesome nice and clean so I just wanted to show you that that there is a difference now I do want to mention I do not buy my own ink so um, every time I run out I am on the HP instant ink I go by sheets so um, if I I go in tiers you can buy as many as you're going to print um, and so I get to use the best quality for every single print. Now, if you buy your ink, I do want to mention that is a concern if you know if you're doing best quality for each one that you print out. So for me, I, I go by sheets, so I do want to make sure each sheet is to the best of um, its quality. All right, so I just wanted to give you all that little quick rundown since I'm going to be working with a ton of printables for this project and I wanted to make sure that they had um, their best quality throughout the year. So moving on, I'm going to show you really quick the um, project life or the uh, cards that I started off with since I was already sharing the breakdown of that. This is Kelly Stamps um, printable digital card set called Goodreads. It came with one sheet. I don't know which I'm going to be using. But I do know I have it there, so that way whenever the book covers tend to match, I will pull it out. This one is called Escalibris and Galaxies uh, from Tracy Redesign. This collection has two sets of cards that you can purchase. They both come with two sheets to print, making that a total of four sheets for this collection. I love the fact that out of all the collections I'm going to be sharing with you guys, this one has the most to choose from, so I do end up using this to uh, decorate my entry page with my goals. All right, we're moving on to the rest are going to be from Anna Cradle Bubble. The first one is on the shelf and it has two pages. Drinking my coffee if you hear me gulping away. 
Um, and there is a different card you can choose from right here with different skin tones. So if you're interested in that, they do have that available. We're moving on to the next collection, also from Unicredit Bubble. I love that girl. She's so cute. And their glasses sticking out. <laughs> and it also comes with two sheets. And it works in both ways, having these when they have a main um, quote. So those are definitely good for filler cards. And then the other ones that have space for journaling so I can my, write my review each time. I just went back to the girl. <laughs> oh, and I didn't see the name for that one. So I was just sharing it with you guys and I don't know how to say it. So there you go. Um, now another one is called Bookworm. And... They do have an additional third sheet for this collection, and it has an additional Project Life card that says books and tea. But I'm not a tea person, so I didn't bother printing that out. Alright, and now this is the last collection. This is also from the Creative Bubble. It is called the Read Journaling Cards. I thought this would be perfect to add for fillers for each of the collections since it is black and white or maybe use it as its own collection in itself as well. But I really enjoyed having this one there to use in case I need it since I know one or two of them had only one sheet with their set. Alright, I'm going to do my cover and my goals and I will get back to you. Here it is. I decided again, like I said, the Esquibris and Galaxy cards. And here are my goals for the year. First one says read 30, 40, 50 books. Now, that probably looks crazy, you guys, but my main goal every year has always been 50 books. I've never met that goal. <laughs> I always do some other random number and I kind of, it kind of leaves me disappointed with myself. So instead of, you know, just setting myself up to fail, I did it myself and a bit of uh, some tears. Last year I read 28 books, so I know this year more than likely I'll read 30. So I placed a number in the middle that in case I make it to 30, but I don't make it a 50, hey, aim for 40. So that's my mindset on that. Moving on to the next one, I want to start three series, but I also want to finish three series that I've started in the, in the last year. I want to read three to five books with more than 300 page guarantee. So I've been aiming toward reading a 500 in a book or something just because I realize I tend to fall for the characters more in the book since they share so much more information. You really do get invested. I hate a book that goes a little too fast because then I feel like it was rushed and I didn't get to know the characters so I didn't get to fall for the book and it wasn't worth it for me. All right, try out two new genres. So I'm comfortable with my choices that I normally read. However, I want to see in branch out that maybe I can find a new genre to love. Read with the boys. My boys are reading now. My older one is starting to get goosebump books and my younger one is picking out Jeannie B. Jones books out of the library. And I want to start reading those because both of those books were books that I chose when I was younger and I just love the fact that they're now on that journey with them and I want to share with them. I want them to know that Reading is so much fun, and I just want to share that with him. I don't know if those books will be placed in here. I may make a little um, horizontal 4 by 6 album and share it with them and maybe ask them their opinions on what can happen and things like that just because it, it'd be a little uh, learning experience with them and just something that we connect with together. But it is a go, and I want to put it there so that way every time I open my album and I see my goals, it's there to remind me. All right, here it is, all completed. My cover page, simple, um, inspirational, and the quotes, I love it. Now we're moving on to January. For January, I read four books. I'm gonna be staying with the collection that I'm working with since there's so many cards. And I saw a yellow one within the collection that was gonna match perfectly with my first book, so that kind of just decided for me. All right, here are the four books that I read, and while I'm placing them in, I'm going to start talking about them. OK, 
Okay, the first book is called Ashes of Twilight, and that's by uh, Cassie Taylor. The main character's name uh, is, is a girl. Her name is Ren. She is a coal miner in a dome city. This city was uh, constructed in the mid 19th centuries, and flash forward to now 200 years later, they're starting to run out of coal. And people were starting to get uh, conspiracy theories that you're able to now leave the dome and um, live out in the, the world again. Of course, um, everybody beyond the, um, within the dome don't agree with that and they're safe there. And so she's kind of in the middle of it all because a friend of hers ends up escaping and... Um, they kill him in front of everybody to set an example not to leave the dome. And uh, she is haunted by what his last words were, which just says the sky is blue. And if um, the natural um, disaster that happened, you know, two years, 200 years before, it was supposed to be up in flames still um, based on a meteor, I, I think that's what it was. And um, basically all I'm sharing is the summary that's on the back of the book. I'm not really sharing any, too, any more information other than the fact that I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. I like seeing the difference on how, um, you know, we survive and we adapt to things, you know, to, in order to survive. It was a really good book. All right, I'm moving on to the next book. It's called Reboot. And um, this book is by Amy Tintera. And the main character is also named Ren. And she... This book for me really kind of hit home since with everything going on with uh, COVID, that's kind of how this book is originating. There was a disease that plagued the entire world and the only population left is in some towns in Texas. She is a uh, reboot. Basically, a reboot is if you got the disease at an early age, um, any age, and uh, you, you died. But after so many minutes, you reboot. You come back to life. You become a reboot. And um, it's I kind of want to say like a zombie, but not because you're more resourceful. You can take a hit. You don't die as much until unless your head's got severed, but you're still... You don't run around like a zombie and you lose your mind. You're more like um, a robot. You lack humanity, uh, emotions and stuff. Well, she was the longest to have been dead at 178 minutes. So her, um, she's the best soldier they have. And things start to change when she starts training a 22 Callum. 22 meaning he was only dead for 22 minutes. Practically, he's still human. Right now, I'm looking for my stamp that has the five stars I love using as my rating star. I just don't know where I stuck it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but while I continue to look for that, I'm going to just talk more about the books. So this book is about um, her training a 22. Normally, she would train one that's the closest to her number, the ones that have been dead the longest since they're more likely, likely to succeed. But for some reason, she decided to train this 22 and it really shifts everything in the book it is an awesome book if you want to read a book on the future and you know it's definitely kind of similar to what's going on right now but really of course exaggerate it since um i don't think we're gonna go this far <laughs> but it is a great book to read i gave that four stars all right we're moving on to the book on this on the right it is called halfway to the grave it's by uh, janine frost this is a reread for me, but I did it in an audio form instead of the how I read them years ago. Um, she, it is about a girl named Kat. Um, she is half vampire, half human. She now is a vampire slayer to avenge her mother who was raped by a vampire. And so that's pretty much how the story goes. This is still a five star from read for me. For me personally, it's five stars because it just adds everything in. It adds in the um, action. It adds in romance. It does get kinky. Just leave you a heads up in case you don't like that type of thing. But the fact that it does add, it really helps you fall in love with the characters. She really goes through a lot in the you know these books, and there's so many books too. Um, that's what I love the most about. I get a fall for the characters and the whole other world. 
So she's going um, and hunting until she meets this one vampire who shows her own game and they start working together until certain things that start popping up along the way. It's a really good five star book for me. All right, moving on to the last one. It's all right, so the last book there at the bottom is Janine Pack. Uh, Janine Frost called Pack. It is a light read. I think that was the lightest book that I read this month. And um, I'm not a werewolf fan, uh, fanatic, but I did like it just because it was by that same author that I I read from. I gave it three stars just because, again, it was a light read. I felt like it was too fast. I didn't get too far for the characters, the whole other world, but I did like um the main character is named Marley. She gets lost in a hike at Yellowstone National Park. And within there, she gets she stumbles into a whole uh, werewolf um, clan. And she cannot leave now that she knows. And she ends up finding um, that they're people too. Um, I hope you got inspired <laughs> with this new project. And as always, thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye.